Good morning class. You are welcome to yet another online tutorials. And today we'll be looking at the topic poetry and kinds. Poetry and kinds. And at the end of this lesson, it is expected that you should be able to define poetry, identify at least 10 kinds of poetry, and then you define any five. So in our lesson today, we'll be looking at at least 15 kinds of poetry. But you are expected to be able to list at least 10 and then you define any five so give good attention to what is taught today so that you will be able to define any five so what is poetry uh, sometimes in the class the teacher can ask you to write a poem writing a poem involves so much even though there are students who tend to have this creative ability to be able to come up with something out of nothing now but poetry has its own style modality certain things that you must put in place if you must write a poetry so poetry just like the rules in english poetry has certain rules that you will observe you don't just put it into writing there are rules so what is the definition of poetry poetry refers in totality to the developed deployment of certain devices such as figures of speech so you see you cannot write a poem without the use of figures of speech of course the figures of speech are very very key because they are the breaking the the uh, bricks that you will need in writing these poems so every poetry must convey feeling rhyme and rhythms tans like divisions meta subject matter in the body of words in order to express an idea or one's impression in a way that what it says attracts attention to itself because no one may have said it in that manner before so somebody can write a poem on life you can write a poem on my mother so depending on how you view it how you see the concept of my mother it becomes poetry for you so but one thing that is very key is that poetry has rules that must be followed we are not here to discuss those rules today now but we are here to look at the kinds of poetry types of poetry that they are so we'll move into kinds of poems number one we have lyric and what is a lyric a lyric is a short poem in which a speaker expresses some intense personal emotion intense personal emotion it can be the emotion of uh, sorrow, it can be the emotion of nostalgia, loneliness, the emotion of unreciprocated love. But one thing that is sure is that it deals with the poet's intense personal emotion. So in medieval times, a lyrical poem was sung to the accompaniment of the lyre, an ancient musical instrument. So back then, a lyrical poem must be sung with the accompaniment of a lyre. So a lyre is a musical instrument. The poet sings as he plays the instrument. One thing is sure. Know that this poem is a poem that expresses personal loneliness. Good examples are visible in the songs of Celine Dion. The songs of Celine Dion, you will see that Celine Dion most at times talks about intense personal feeling, love, unreciprocated love, loneliness, and what have you. So that is what a lyrical poem is. Then you have another type of poem. And what is Ode? Ode is a meditative poem which addresses itself to a person or a thing in which the good qualities of such a person or object are highlighted or commended so all is a kind of a point where you address an inanimate object, an abstract concept or nature and then you give such object the features of human such object possesses elements the features of humans and then such objects are addressed as if they can see they can hear now uh, a popular ode you have is uh, a poem written by D. H. Lawrence, Snake, where he was talking about uh, addressing snake as if snake is human, giving snake certain qualities that humans ordinarily should possess. So, all this usually narrative and then uh, highly 
elaborative. Examples are Ode to Duty by William Wordsworth and uh, Ode to the Grotian On by John Keats. Notes Ode is usually a poem addressed to inanimate objects, not to humans, inanimate objects, and they are treated as if such inanimate objects are humans. Then you have another type which is pastoral poem. So, pastoral poem. It's a poem which describes the simple life of rural people, especially of shepherds around whom are beauty, love, music, values, which remain forever green in mind. So, pastoral deals majorly with the rural lifestyle. In contrast with the urban lifestyle, it is believed that urbanism comes with lots of hustle and bustle, stress, pains, frustration, division dissension unlike uh, the rural lifestyle where you see communism and the togetherness is preached so in the pastoral poem emphasis is placed on the way people live their life in the rural society so this is opposed to the city life like i said earlier with its also and bustle its artificial lifestyle in which ancient values are no longer respected of course in these modern times you see, ancient values are no longer respected the way they ought to be. So, pastoral poem deals with rural way of life and focus on such values that had existed in those times. So, the next one is ballad. Ballad. This is a narrative kind of poem that is usually passed down from generation to generation. It is narrative because it tells a story. It tells a story. Well, it can be the story of uh, a, the community's way of life, stories of heroes in the community, stories of achievement and exploits of heroes. They are handed down, they are handed down from generation to generation. Every genealogy must know the ballad of their own peculiar system. Do you understand? So what I mean, every clan must understand they are ballad that is unique to them. So, its subject often centers on tragic events such as sudden death by incident, treachery against a friend, in love or war or during hunting expedition. So, you see, in the rural time, in the old times, people in the rural society must be able to tell the ballad of their society then. And every child takes over from the father and it's expected that they should be able to hand these things over to their children. That is what ballad is all about. Then, another type of poem is sonnets. Sonnets. Sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. A poem of 14 lines. Whose rhythmic pattern is iambic pentameter. Iambic. Iam is a system of writing where you have two metrical feet. Two metrical feet. The, if, for instance, in English, you will call it two syllables, two syllables, where the first is unstressed, followed by the second. The, stress is on, the first is unstressed, while the second is stressed. The first is unstressed, while the second is stressed. E.g., if you have a word like um, uh, discounts, discounts, this is unstressed. Count is stress, so that is what iambic is. Then pentameter has to do with a situation where you have uh, a group of words which must appear in five metrical feet. Five metrical feet means that altogether you're going to have uh, ten syllables. Ten syllables. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, but put together in twos which is called pentameter. Pentameter now becomes five. Those ten syllables are now paired. They are paired into two, 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 which is a pentameter. And don't forget I am. I am means two. On stress, followed by stress. But one thing that is sure is that sonnet is a poem of 14 lines. 14 lines. Take note of that. 14 lines. Then we have Examples of 
Solid is the popular shall I compare thee to a summer's day, which is part of your skin. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day written by William Shakespeare. Now, we'll move to epic. Epic. And what is epic? Epic is usually a poem that celebrates real historical events, heroic achievement, heroic figures, civilization, etc. So, epic is a poem of adventure, a poem that sees an, a hero embarking on an adventure to save the community, adventure to bring victory home, adventure to bring uh, home, you know, trophies. That's what epic uh, celebrates and then uh, you see majorly the activities of the heroes are put into focus the challenges the pains the ordeals and probably all the encounters he, he will have to undergo so it's usually written in elevated language and style don't forget epic deals majorly with the celebration of what heroic achievements heroic achievement and real historical events so it may be oral or written oral or written and sometimes it features a supernatural character so it can deal with the, the epic can be a myth it can be a legend so it is a myth most times when uh, uh, supernatural beings are seen to carry out certain exploits is a legend when natural beings humans do originally what extraordinary humans would have done so that is what epic it's all about so example is homer's iliad and milton's paradise lost you have another one which is limerick limerick it is an unserious poem of five lines with rhyme scheme a a b b a limerick usually limerick is a witty kind of poem and uh, usually rude in its presentation and the uh, people most times poets don't take limerick too serious because it usually present an unserious thing but one thing that is sure about it is that the limerick tries to address a very serious matter in an unserious manner that is why it is said that its language is usually indecent but characterized by wit then you have lullaby lullaby and a lullaby is a poem composed to be sung to children with a view to making them sleep so lullaby is a unique kind of poem uh, there are formal and informal lullabies It's very common uh, amongst uh, mothers when you see a mother trying to keep a pet top baby calm most times they sing lullaby spontaneously it comes so whether formal or informal, spontaneously it comes. But the essence is to keep troubled baby calm. Like we said, it could be formal or informal. Then we have panegyric. A panegyric poem is a poem of praise. It's a poem of praise. So it celebrates everything about the goodness hmm, of a situation. It elogizes the heroic deeds or attributes of individual or group. So it focuses on goodness, goodness, praise, adulation. That is what the panegyric. So any poem of praise, any poem of praise that brings to the limelight the wonderful elements of a concept, an idea, a thing, such poems are referred to as panegyric in nature. So it is a type of traditional African poetry. And it may even be praise of animal or any other entity with outstanding attributes, whether positive or negative. Then you have dej and elegy. So, what is a dej? What is an elegy? You see, both of them are used interchangeably. Dej, elegy, but one thing you must know is that there is a little thin line difference between the dej and elegy. So, it is a poem used to express grief on the occasion of someone's death. So every dej, every elegy is usually at the death of a dear one. So what is the major theme that every dej must carry? Uh, sorrow, you know, nostalgia, and what have you. So but just know that elegy 
veg they are usually poems that talk about you know the loss of a dear one a popular dej is kofi awuna's song of sorrow then we have blank verse what is a blank verse a blank verse is a poem defined as unrhyming verse written in a young big pentameter a young big pentameter while we were discussing sonnets we talk about i am big pentameter already you know what is i am i am is where you have two metrical feet two metrical feet where the first meter is on stress and the second meter is stressed that is i am originally i told you this english language it is called syllables first syllables no stress second syllable stress so a blank verse is a poem defined as on rhyming verse written in a yambic pentameter what are the powerful elements you must take note in a blank verse you see it has a consistent meter with 10 syllables in each line so most sonnets are usually written in blank verse most sonnets are usually written in blank verse do you understand good now we say we are on stress syllables are followed by stressed ones five of which are stress but do not rhyme five of which are stressed or do not rhyme when we come to the elements of poem we will take our time to explain uh, what we mean by meta rhyme and what have you but today we are looking at kinds of poem so we say that a blank verse has a consistent meter consistent meter and every line of a blank verse must have 10 meters 10 meters put together into I am it gives you pentameter so in pair in pair it will be 5 so the 10 will be divided by 2 which will give you 5 and what is that is what is referred to as pentameter now it is also known as an unrhyme iambic pentameter unrhyme because it does not observe the rules of rhyme yes Blank verse does not observe the rule of rhyme. That is why it is referred to as on rhyme, iambic pentameter. So what is free verse? Free verse. Don't get it twisted. It's similar with blank verse, but be sensitive to see that there is a difference between the both. A free verse is a literary device that can be defined as poetry that is free from limitations of regular meter. Regular meter or rhythm and does not rhyme with fixed forms. So unlike blank verse hmm, there is no rhyme at all in free verse there are irregular meters there are irregular meters hmm? what am i trying to say irregular in the sense that there are certain points where you may observe rhyme and there are points where you may not see rhyme but for a blank verse there are no rhymes at all so such poems are without rhythm and rhyme schemes do not follow regular rhyme scheme so like we said before they don't follow regular rhyme scheme yes yet they still provide artistic expression so the blank verse the free verse most of the sonnets you have are usually written in blank verses and in free verses so with this uh Okay, finally we say in this way, the poet can give his own shape to a poem, however he or she desires. It's just to, for you to understand the, the, the concepts, the rules that are involved in writing a poem, and then you will be able to write a poem. Whether you want to write a free verse, a blank verse, an odd, a panegyric, an epic, that is up to you on how you intend to do it. So, having said this, we've come to the end of our lecture today. Uh, hopefully, when we meet again, we will look at some elements of poetry, some basic terms you should consider if you are going to write a poem. So, have a lovely day. Thank you for listening. We'll see you soon again. Thank you and goodbye.